It is the world famous weather for weather geeks. Here we are Monday evening. Welcome back everyone. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, the weather certainly was lousy on Saturday. It improved some on Sunday and that improvement did continue today. Uh, we got a lot to talk about this evening, so let's get right to it. Of course, cold morning this morning with some patches of frost. We had temperatures in the upper 20s to around 30 or so in a lot of the valley as we kicked off the day. A quick review of the first eight days of the month forecasting-wise. We were on the money today. 55 was the forecast. 54 was the high. Our accuracy streak up to three days. We've only had one miss this month, and that was that big miss we had uh, last Friday at the end of the week. All right, of course, it's been a very soggy start to the month of May. Today, the first dry day we've put on the board in 12 days. Now, yesterday, of course, during the daylight hours, it was dry. But before sunrise, we did pick up a, a, an additional couple hundredths of an inch. 1.86 in the rain bucket at the airport uh, so far this month. And, of course, uh, the first week of May and the end of April wasn't great either. And uh, the first week of May through the first seven days are coldest first week of May since 2005, and our sixth wettest start to the month of May uh, on record here in Youngstown. Uh, again, with close to two inches worth of rain at the airport, some of us have picked up uh, quite a bit more than that in the rain that we've had over the last week or so. All right, let's uh, start projecting into the future here. Uh, tomorrow morning, I think temperatures are going to be similar to what they were this morning at daybreak. Very, very similar. We're talking upper 20s to around 30, 31, 32 on average, and that's the reason why the Weather Service has a freeze warning out for all of our counties except for Columbiana, where it's a frost advisory. Doesn't matter what it is. The impacts are the same everywhere. Temperatures are going to be similar no matter what county you live in. Some of us will have a little frost in the morning, and temperatures will be close to freezing. I think once we're done with tonight, uh, we're probably safe from any frosts and freezes for the rest of the season. So probably safe to uh, you know really go whole hog on that garden and getting uh, getting your outdoor planting done. All right, over the last six hours, most of the action's been out west uh, along the front range of the Rockies from Colorado into New Mexico. A big time hailstorm just before rush hour in Denver today. I mean, hail, monster hail. Looked like snow covering the ground. It was so big. And uh, severe weather continues uh, this evening out in that neck of the woods. All right, our sky is nice and clear. So it's a good evening to check out the moon and nearby Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter was closer to the moon in the sky last night, but still with a clear sky this evening. This is definitely worth checking out a little after uh, sunset this evening. Uh, the, the two brightest objects in the evening sky are the moon and Jupiter, and they remain pretty close in the south to southeast sky this evening. All right, pretty quiet week coming up. I, I think tomorrow we'll start with sun. We'll notice an increase in high and mid-level clouds as we get into the afternoon, but these won't produce any rain. And then we'll get back into some sunshine for a good chunk of the day on Wednesday. Little ripple comes along this kind of stalled front to our south, and this actually is probably our best chance for rain during the work week. This will be Wednesday night and early Thursday, and this isn't going to be much. I mean, we're talking about a couple of showers, probably the best chance south of Youngstown. So uh, we're looking at a pretty good chance to dry out this week. Uh, my yard remains kind of swampy after all this rain. But uh, with sunshine, we'll continue to get a chance to dry out, and you can mow the grass with no weather-related worries tomorrow and Wednesday. We'll give you the caution light on Thursday because it could be a little damp at the start of the day, but by the afternoon, we should be in pretty good shape. Look at those highs, though. You know, it's not bad, but it's, it's cooler than it should be at this time of the year. All right, our, our pattern remains kind of blocked up, what we call an omega block. Uh, it kind of looks like the Greek letter omega, kind of like that. Um, and as long as that is the dominant pattern across the lower 48 states, uh, we're going to be stuck on the cool side of this pattern. Now, there's going to be some variation here over the next week or so, but the pattern remains pretty blocky through the weekend, and a fresh little cool shot may come down for the weekend. Now, it's not going to be a big change, but it's just going to prevent any sort of significant warmth from coming east. Uh, as long as that trough position is somewhere over the Great Lakes and into the Hudson Bay and into the Northeast, it's just going to have a hard time getting warm here. Now, as we uh, go deeper into next week, I do think the pattern starts to become more, more and more favorable. As the, as the trough, or the upper low, instead of sitting here, is more over here, I think some warmth will finally be able to make some inroads. This is towards the end of next week and into the following weekend. So we've got a little ways to go until we get any sort of consistent warmth. Uh, backing up and taking a look at Mother's Day weekend coming up. This is the GFS model. There's some model differences on the details as we head into the weekend. Let's fast forward to Saturday here. GFS suggests there's some disorganized, widely scattered stuff around on Saturday. It doesn't look like any kind of washout. 
and some of the modeling is even completely dry on Saturday. So we head into Mother's Day on Sunday. GFS tries to bring a front through. European model doesn't look like this. So what I did with the forecast is I kept a low chance of precipitation in for both days this weekend. I don't think either day is a washout. Both days might end up being dry, but I'm not confident enough to uh, say 0% chance of rain for Mother's Day weekend. So low end chances, uh, we'll, we'll hone in on that forecast as we get a little bit closer. I want to finish up tonight uh, with the longer range. On Mondays and Thursdays, we get uh, long range forecasts from the European modeling. Uh, this is over the next month. Um, we're looking at uh, precipitation anomalies here. Last few times I've shown this, there hasn't been much of a signal in terms of rain in the longer range. Uh, but on this particular run tonight, uh, showing kind of a dry signal for us over the next month. So we've been real wet lately, but if this ends up being the right idea, uh, the second half of May into the first week or so of June may not be as consistently wet. We'll see if this is a one day blip or if this is a trend. We'll look at Thursday's edition of the European Long Range Modeling and see if uh, th that trend continues. Wouldn't be bad news. We've had plenty of rain this spring so far. We're no danger of going into a drought if we have a couple of dry weeks. So. That would not necessarily be a bad thing if that panned out. Thanks for watching tonight's Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you tonight on 21 News at 11, and have yourself a great Monday night.